and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. So, welcome Jeff. Uh, Thank you. Pleasure to have you on XY Advisor, on XY Live. Now, today I reckon it's, it's all about philanthropy, it's all about investments and, and bringing them together and I guess creating, uh, creating some great outcomes for uh, charities, for, um, for people um, with what they're doing with the money. So I guess a lot of your clients would be getting a lot more fulfillment um, with uh, what they're doing with you. In terms of why you've, you've gone into this space, what's been the driver of getting into, into uh, philanthropy and, and, and the take that you've had on it? Uh, look, I suppose what it is um, with everyone, a, as you move up the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in terms of you get enough uh, money for food and shelter, then you get to a situation where you try to work out how you can give back to the you know, community you operate in. And um, you know, I've always been a big believer in that. Um, you know, go back 25 years ago when I was a stockbroker, I um, sort of set up with some other guys the Australian Stockbrokers Foundation. Then when I became a fund manager, I set up the Australian Fund Managers uh, Foundation. And, you know, 20 odd years ago, I set up my funds management business. And then, you know, as, as the business has grown, we, we probably, probably to summarise that, we, we look at three things. You know, we're trying to make a difference at Wilson Asset Management. In terms of one is returns for shareholders uh, or investors. Secondly, is to give back to the community you operate in. And thirdly, is to be a voice uh, or, or look, at, look after and support at, uh, retail investors, which sometimes they don't have a voice. So that, that's, that's how I, um, you know, what we're trying to achieve. Mm. But in terms of from the philanthropic side, when I saw this structure, um, which you know, we're going to talk about today the, the future gener future generation companies. I saw this set up about five years ago in the UK. Okay. What an amazing structure that I could bring back to Australia. And, and, and broadly, the structure is it's to get the best fund managers you can find, ask them to manage money for free, and then that allows you to um, give 1% of the assets each year to uh, you know, charities. Um, and the deal for, the structure is a cracking structure because the fund manager does it, it costs the fund manager nothing more. Like we manage $2.5 billion. Mm. If we manage another $100 million for free, all we've got to do is buy a few more shares each time you know, we're buying shares or selling shares. Yeah, it doesn't actually cost us any money. So it's not such a hard thing to get the fund manager to agree. Mm. And th then the, uh, and the, the fantastic thing is, you know, the, the two big winners out of this are the investor and also the charities or the not-for-profits. So the investor, instead of you know, investing with the smartest managers that we can find, you know, some investors can't get access to these guys. Some of the funds we're in are actually closed. Mm. And even if they can get access, um, they have to pay fees which are a lot higher than the 1% that goes to charity. I mean, take ourselves. We charge a 1% management fee and a 20% performance fee. Mm. So with the funds we manage for future generation investment company, we give the 1% back to the company and we give the 20% performance feedback to the company. Yeah. So you're actually getting money managed more cheaply than you would by putting it with the fund managers. So it's how, like, how are those conversations, Jeff? <laughs> or asking the fund managers to do it for free. Yeah, yeah. These guys are used to getting paid a bit and you're, you're taking away the money. <laughs> well, well, no, but for the, see, they still get paid on everything they manage. So, so there's actually no disadvantage to them. Uh, and, and I mean, it, it, initially it was a tough call and in the early days I'd ring them up and say, hey, look, I, I want to hit you up for some something and then they immediately freeze 
because they think I'm going to put my hand in their pocket and take some money out. Yeah. But the um, then when I say, look, I just like you to give us say fifty million dollars of capacity mm. and, and don't charge us. Mm. Then it's a lot easier decision. And what what what's blown me away was the incredible uh, sort of generosity of all the fund managers I ask. Initially, they all said yes, yeah, yes, and in the end, a couple of them had conflicts, um, mm. and so. You know, they mightn't have gone, they didn't go ahead, but they're all so positive. Um, yeah. Well, and it's, you're, you're putting together, you're bringing the money to this. So they're not having to go out and um, talk to people and get, get the investors in. Mm. This is something you guys are doing with future generation, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. And, and, and see, our, our business is listed investment companies. You know, the 2.5 bill we manage is all in listed investment companies. You know, the largest being Wham Capital. So... When we set up you know, Future Generation Investment Company, FGX, and Future Generation Global, FGG, mm. um, you know, one with Australian managers, FGX, and FGG with global managers, it was, um, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was just a really good structure for them just to give their expertise to um, and, and for the shareholder to get a great benefit. Um, mm. and, and, and for the not-for-profit or the charity to get a great benefit because they're getting an annuity stream which isn't costing them a fortune to raise the money. We've all heard about you know, these charities raising money and you know, spending 50 cents to get a dollar. You know, these guys, they're getting... Yeah, all well, those phone calls and people on the streets. And... All that, all that things. You know, they're, they're getting, um, on an annual basis, $7 million a year split amongst the various charities. Mm. Uh, and and, that, and that'll grow as the as the you know fund managers grow the the corpus. Yeah, there's a consistency that you're delivering. Mm. We we go into that soon. I'm I'm curious in terms of the type of people that have been attracted to what sort of clients. Uh, is there a certain type of person that that you've noticed um, is more common than others that get attracted to this sort of setup? The, the I mean, in terms of the the group of investors that love listed investment companies are self-managed super funds. Mm. You know, they, they like the fact that not like a, you know, if, if, you, if you've got a choice, you invest in a, a listed investment company or a managed fund. The, if you invest in a managed fund, then you really don't have much engagement with the fund manager or engagement with the people running it, say the board that's responsible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's not, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an investment and you hope that the fund manager performs. You know, there's no outlet for you to question how they're performing, et cetera. But with a listed investment company, that's why there's been enormous demand, I think, from the self-managed super area for listed investment companies. And we've seen, you know, the, the listed investment company sector grow. I think there's been, you know, it's grown by 60 odd percent in terms of number of listings over the last few mm. years. Uh, and, and a lot of your fellow fund managers are hopping yeah. over into it. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. And, and that's because, Say, you know, say with us, Wham Capital, 60% of our shareholders are self-managed super funds. And with FGX and FGG, they would be, I would say, like 40 to 50% of shareholders would be self-managed super funds. Mm -hmm. The others would be um, like foundations or, 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 or PAFs, mm -hmm. which are foundation structures. Uh, and, and then there'll be the high net worth individuals um, that, say, invest direct and, and retail investors. And do you have, I guess, it, it's grown over the last few years. Is there, is there a challenge around capacity that you, you've got to manage on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I mean, always a challenge on capacity. You know, when we floated uh, FGX, which was the Australian one, and we floated that one first, you know, three and a bit years ago, mm. um, the board said to me, well, uh, we had a one-for-one -one option outstanding. You know, so we raised $200 million. We're oversubscribed. You know, we, we put a maximum of 200 because I thought we'd get nowhere near 200, mm. um, which we, we're really pleasantly surprised about that. Uh, and then the board said, well, what happens if all the option money comes in? Where will we get the capacity? And I said, well, it took, it took a month to get the first 200 million of capacity. You know, we've got 18 months to get the next 200 million. Uh, and, and in the end, uh, and, and most, of the, most of the fund managers even though they might have initially, when they gave us capacity, said, look, that's all, you, you've, that's all we'll give you. Because they realised the incredible good it's doing, 
uh, in terms of investing with either of these charities. Um, and we try to connect them with those charities and understand you know, how, how they're really making a difference in the world. Yeah. Um, then they give us more capacity. So the harder part is when the investment committee you know, wants to remove some of the managers. And, and we, uh, you know, it, it's an investment. First and foremost, this is an investment. Mm. Yeah, it, it's a, to me, it's a fantastic investment, great structure. Yeah, it's, it's, you're investing with the best, you know, we've, we've used boutique managers because we think they add the most value. Mm. Um, so you're investing with those guys and you're paying less than what you'd need to pay if you invest with them in normal channels. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's just, a, it's just a fantastic structure. Yeah, so we've got, you've got money being invested um, with, a, like, I guess, an expert investment committee selecting the underlying managers. Yes. You've got um, no fees being charged. Yes. And if they were, they would be more than the, the amount that's being given away to charity each year out of the fund. So, well, well, effectively, yeah, the, the fees are, I mean, there's no fees being charged, but um, the... The 1% that goes to... Charity, yeah, but, but the actual, the fees are getting rebated from the managers. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so they're actually charging them. So we can see, and I think I think that it was, you say for FGX, mm -hmm. um, I think the numbers were something like, you, you got a 40% discount. Yeah, uh, on, on what you would have paid over the last 12 months if you'd had had the money with those managers and they'd performed yeah. as they have. Yeah, it's a pretty, um, like, I don't know. If you're a logic person, you're looking at that and going, well, shit, even if I don't care about charity, like... <laughs> yeah, well, to, to me, my, my, my cousin, who's a great cynic of the, <laughs> the finance industry... What are you trying to sell me, Jeff? What are you trying to sell me? No, no, he said, I've worked it out, Jeff. You personally want to invest with those managers, but you don't want to pay performance fees. <laughs> because because, because we, we've selected the smartest and the best guys, and, and, and because they, they have done so well, then they can get away with pay, with charging performance fees. Mm. Um, so in this, in this way, you're paying less than what you'd normally pay, uh, plus you're not paying any, you know, you're not splitting the performance with them. You're getting it all yourself as an yeah, investor. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's, um, mm. The conversations for the, the, the funds that you've got to get rid of, they must be awkward sometimes. Oh. Tough, tough, tough. Because yeah, as you said, you have more yeah. relationships with them, trying to encourage them to come in. Yep. Oh, and 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 what we do is we work on them. Like, I mean, last night we had a dinner. We had all the FGX and FGG fund managers, um, and we had the governor of the Reserve Bank. It, it was just us, um, mm. you know, just explaining what's happening in the in Australia and the world. Uh, last year we had David Murray after he did the. Um, you know, the review into the financial the system. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, we've sort of, they feel as though they're really part of the inner you know, sanctum. Mm. Um, and then it, it is tough when we ring them up and say, look, thanks for managing the money for nothing for the last period of time, but the investment committee has decided we'd like to rotate you out for various reasons. Um, you know, we try not to be too brutal. Mm. Um, and but they all take it they all take it well if you've got a, a clear framework that you would have communicated to them initially yeah that you guys aren't matching up to that anymore yeah um, yeah that's yeah, fair enough i mean what we look at is you know the investment committee broadly you now we've invested with the gr various groups of managers for various reasons so we're very clear of why we've given them the manager money mm. and yeah, mixing up the styles is that Sort of how you look at correct. it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. We, we're broadly trying to see what we're trying to do is pick the best managers mm -hmm. in Australia for the Australian money and globally, yeah, you know, for the global money. Mm. Um, and and then guilt them into giving you capacity. Well, yeah. There's the capacity. <laughs> that's that's an easy question uh, usually, uh, and, and a good answer. But it's really we're trying to match with those managers, um, what we're trying to do is broadly half the portfolio, we want long equities and the other half of the portfolio, we want them to have some defensive characteristics. Mm. And what we're hoping is this, is the portfolio will 
perform in line or better than the market with less volatility. And, and FGX, the Australian one's been going for longer. And that's nearly had half the volatility of the market, but it's outperformed the market by I think three and a half percent since inception. Mm. So you'd normally think if you're getting less volatility, you know, in theory, there's less risk. So your return will be less. Mm. Uh, but because they're boutique managers that have all added you know, good value, you know, mm. then or performance, you know, then we're getting less volatility with better performance. So, is, there a bit of, uh, is there a bit of competition between the guys when you're sitting down at the table? And uh... oh, well, as in last night, no, because they're all they, they all realise. Yeah, you know, I mean, last night we we have these meetings with them just to thank them because this is only possible by them allowing us to mm. do this. Yeah, you know, and the big beneficiaries of, of this are the investors mm -hmm. uh, and, and and the charities. They're the major beneficiaries. Um, and um, yeah, like it was to me, it was it was very powerful last night. And yeah, you know, Philip Lowe, the governor of the Reserve Bank, who who is very philanthropic, um, mm -hmm. you know, he's 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 involved in a number of charities, mm -hmm. you know, effectively thanking the fund managers for for what they're doing. And yeah, you know, to me, I think we've all got a responsibility and a right to give back. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 we we just you know we just sort of of providing the, you know, the funnel or the structure for this to happen. Mm. Well, I know you do a lot. Of, um, you're very generous on the Wilson side of things in terms of letting letting these funds, FTX, and um, use your infrastructure to, and that's how it's managed. So your team um, jumps in there and does that for free or yeah. low cost to, to. Oh, free. No, no, we do it. For, it probably costs us half a million dollars a year. But, and everyone says, oh, well, why do that? Why don't you charge them? But, yeah, in terms of for us as an organisation, you can be a fund manager, but that's just you know all you're doing is effectively trying to manage money the best you can and making money. Mm. Um, where as an organisation, you know we all feel a lot better uh, mm. if if we're actually giving back, and even though it's a cost to you know, our, our business. It's actually we do get significant benefit in terms of staff, you know, fulfilment, you know, retention. Um, well, I can imagine know. it acts a bit like a bit of a marketing channel for any of the funds that do. Um, I'm sure that's a big aspect for them that they yes, their um their public and brand image um is, would not, definitely not be diminished by um being involved with this. Well, so. well and, and a number of them use it. Yeah, and yeah, a number of them are very grateful for us for including them. Um, yeah, you know, because it does, you know, it does do that. You know, they, they use it in their marketing. You know, one of the fund managers calls himself, uh, what is it, a, a foundation fund manager for FGX, you know, when he's marketing to the big yep. you know, super funds yep. um, that he's pitching for business. So, you know, it, it, does, it does work both ways. Yeah, that's good. The, I, I think, um, yeah, it's, a re it's a, such a fantastic example of partnership um, and sort of bringing various stakeholders together to achieve a communal outcome. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to know the so the the one that you'd seen in the UK. What was what what business was that, or what was the? Oh, it was called Battle Against Cancer Investment Trust (BACIT). Okay, and they had a guy Tom Henderson who's related to Henderson Asset Management. I think that was his grandfather. Yeah, um, and he he was a fund manager and a broker himself. And he just thought that he'd set that up, and and it was 470 odd million pound, uh, and giving one percent, so 4.7 million pound a year away. Half of that money went to the not for uh, profit, which is the the Institute of Cancer Research, and the other half of the money went to about 16 odd charities. Since then, he's actually he's he wants to really turn the dial on cancer research. Um, and health sciences, mm -hmm. and he's done a deal with uh, the Wellcome Trust, and yeah. now it's nearly a billion dollar, uh, sorry, a billion pound organisation, wow. uh, and investing directly into um, you know, life sciences. Okay. Oh, so the funds is, is that the one percent going into that, or part of no, the funds are being actually no, the, the capital, the capital, because he believes you can get a. a, a if not, or a better return than giving it with the fund managers, where hey, we're not going to change the model. We're very happy with 
the model we've got. And, and the beautiful thing about our model is, to me, it's not only if you're a big shareholder or a small shareholder, um, and to me, it's also potentially a learning structure. You know, if if you, know, you give to your children, and what they realise is, you know, from this investment, you get two things. You get actually a financial return. Mm. But once a year as a shareholder, you're asked with your 1%, mm. you know, on your pro rata basis, of, of the charities on the list, which of those charities do you want the money to go to? Mm. So um, it's like a voting system? Or? Well, yeah, exactly. So effectively, yeah, I mean, the shareholders decide. Uh, yeah. it's a democracy. You know, the shareholders decide where that money goes. Now, the board has, just, has picked the charities and the focus. Yeah. Um, but they filter what comes into that selection list? Sorry, the shareholders... They, the board selects, chooses what comes into the, select, the list of selection. Yeah, and, and, and that's what we started with. Like, FGX is children at risk, mm -hmm. and we've got the group of charities, you know, the 14 odd charities there, and FGG is youth mental health, and we've got eight charities there. And then once a year, the, the shareholder gets asked, with, you know, what percentage do you want of your pro rata 1%, do you want to go to which of these charities? Mm. That's, that's awesome. So you're getting, you're getting that engagement factor as well, that you're not just, um, yeah. yeah, the money's not just being given, you're, you've yeah. got an, a, a, an element of control or influence on where it goes. Different. And if, if you own a million shares or above, then you can direct that 1% to any charity in Australia. Mm. It doesn't have to be the ones on, on that list. Yeah, so it gives you a bit of a, like almost like a private ancillary fund, the PAFs you mentioned before. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, that that's level right. of discretion. Yeah, that's right. And, 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 and like, you know, a number of the PAFs are investors and, and they, they have to give away 5% per annum. Mm. But in theory, this is, you know, if they invest their money in there and, and actually, see, I, I have a PAF and um, we own 5 million, broadly 5 million shares in each of the, entities mm -hmm. uh, i mean that is our that is our investment portfolio because to me we pick the smartest and the best fund managers for both entities now what it gives me a diversified portfolio um and, and it gives me australian equities and global equities and plus the one percent you know obviously i'm keen on the charities that are on the list so we just you know focus on giving a one percent there but then all the distributions you can well, that's right. So in theory, for a PAF, you get you've got to give your five percent away. Then, then the money being managed, which in theory you'd normally pay someone to do, mm -hmm. you're getting that back, so you can give another one percent to the charities you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, what. What's the for the advisors out there who and the people that don't know about PAF too much about PAFs? What's the minimum that people would need to get involved with those? Oh, see, in, in, in what for a PAF or mm. yeah, for a PAF. Oh, to set up one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I set up mine back out in 2002 with half a million dollars. I mean, okay. and, and, and you know, the cost of the auditing and there's some administration costs. But mm -hmm. pretty much, um, you know, they, they now have structures that, you know, sort of more public ones uh, rather than the private. Yeah, where you can just, ancillary funds. Yeah, yeah, where you can just be a, you know, where, where all the costs are sort of grouped. Mm -hmm. So you can just put in a, a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they're, they're good structures. But in terms of investing in FGX or FGG, just like a share trades on the stock market. Now they're, they're both the cheap. Price. Yep. Yeah, they're both cheap at the moment. You know, the I'd say the live NTAs. Yeah, you know, we announced the NTA on a on a monthly basis. You know, around the fourteenth of each month yep. after the end of the previous month. And I'd say the NTA is live around that. You know, like like dollar eighteen to dollar twenty, and they're both trading you know, around that dollar thirteen, dollar fourteen. So you're actually getting, you're not only getting good managers, but you're getting them slightly cheaply. Yeah. Then if you direct, invest in a unitized vehicle directly with them. It, yes. Yeah. That's right. Is that a? a I suppose we could we could go down the path of discussing the trading of um, listed investment companies, yes. but I guess. Um, I wouldn't mind going back to the the English business you mentioned because that's going into a space that's a little bit different. That's yes. sort of a, what what you may call impact investing, where 
Yeah. There's a certain social benefit that's been determined um, and part of the filtering process of where the money goes. Yes. So they've they've designated that these businesses. I can't remember exactly what um, what they were, what space they were in. Life sciences, life sciences. Yeah, yeah. life sciences. So they so it's almost like biotech companies that they've sort of seen. Yeah, but effectively biotech companies that are, are, are going to change the world for the better in terms of from a health perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, very similar to say the Institute of Cancer Research. Mm. Uh, that's that uses money researching cures for cancer. Mm. So effectively, but what they're doing it, it they're, they're doing it on a grand st- scale mm. instead of instead of. Um, There's no return out of that. It's it's gone. One other, no, 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 there can be a return. See if they commercialise all this. And, that, and that's what they believe they can do. So they believe they'll give you a better return. Yeah, than, awesome. Yeah, than a mess. You know, to me, that's, hey, look, I, you know, I respect Tom immensely. Uh, and when he did it, I rang him and said, why are you doing this? And he said, you know, I, he said, I think it's going to you know, really move the dial more. You know, it'll, it'll make more of an impact. And the investors will get, if not as good, uh, maybe a better return. Do they do they lend a hand uh, with their expertise in that process as well? Or well, they, they actually merged. Business? Yeah, they they merged with a yeah you know, already quite a you know big cohort of um, uh, life science investors that were that were run or controlled or funded by the Wellcome Trust over there. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how it's, you know, that's could how it's playing out. Could you see a similar move over here in the future? No, no. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just, a, to me, it's just a simple model we have. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. we have the fund managers managing your money pro bono, 1% going to charity. Um, yeah, everyone's a winner. Uh, yeah, it's a win, win, win. Uh, to me, it's we we could make it significantly more complex, uh, but to me, life's too short. Oh. Sorry, you just lost me. Um, my speaker dropped up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so Jeff, um, the I guess some of the things that were interesting. So the communications out to clients around um around what's going on. You you give regular communications. That's that's a big part of what Yeah. Well I mean it probably comes back to listed investment companies. What what's how how do you get a listed investment company to trade an NTA or a premium? Now mm. firstly you got to treat well first of all you got to perform. Secondly you provide a, a reasonable yield. And the great thing about the listed investment company, another reason why the self managed super investors like it is mm. because they can pay the yield out over time where a trust structure, you put your money in, so they're up 30% that year, then you get a big 30% payout, and then they might be down the following year, you get nothing. Where with a less yeah. investment company, you can smooth it, you know, give them a five or 6% yield on an ongoing basis over five years. Or you know, yeah, with a bit of luck. Do you manage the distributions? In yes, the that's right, that's yeah, right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's a positive. The so, so that's why the structure, so the yield's important. And then treating sellers with respect is important. And I know you, you think, oh, well, it's just basic. But a number of companies or directors you now make mistakes um, where they sort of raise money at inopportune times. You know, they, they use bad structures. They do placements at discounts to NTA. Um, you know, it's incredible how naive some of them are. Mm. And then the fourth thing is just to communicate with shareholders and have a have a marketing strategy to get new shareholders. And it just takes time for the shareholder base to to tighten up. Mm. And we found that with WAM Capital, say, 20 years ago. In the first couple of years, we traded at a 20% discount to NTA. Jeez. And over that first two years, 35% of our shareholders sold out. And over that first two years, it was fascinating. On the dollar that we've... Uh, floated the shares at, we paid a 12 cent fully frank dividend the first year and a 14 cent fully frank dividend the second year. We just had a couple of cracking years. Wow. But even so, we're still at a big discount. And and what 
what I saw there was, it's just people have bought this share and they don't know what it was. And they didn't know what we were. Um, they didn't know that uh, you know, a lot, an investment company is a diversified portfolio. You know, it performs gradually over time. Um, so once they've all sold out, and then you get people that believe in what you're doing, you know, the share register tightens up, the share price trades around you know, NTA if you're lucky and may go to a premium. Mm. Uh, to me, it's a bit crazy at the moment. Wham! Capital's trading at about 25% above what the assets are worth. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's that's extreme. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, seen, that's expensive. That the market making, so some of the new listed investment companies, they've got a market making going on where they match it or at least give a floor to uh, the the price so it doesn't go below the NTA and they do that daily. Is that have you brought that in at all with any funds? Uh, that, that's more, that's more the you know the, the exchange managed funds. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we ha we haven't done that because you you can do buybacks and licks, but you can't market make. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 what will happen is with FGX and FGG, to me, it, it is a great buying opportunity at the moment because you're try buying them below NTA, mm. and, and the share register will slowly because they're new companies. The people that bought them for the wrong reason will sell them, uh, and and other people will buy them, and you know they're getting them slightly cheaply now. When you get if it if it does eventually get back to the NTA, you're getting a free uplift in valuation. Yeah, there's a yeah five percent. Well, you're buying you're buying a dollar of asset. Sorry, you're buying a dollar of assets and paying ninety five cents. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a good deal to me, especially when you <laughs> and you're giving to charity at the same time. Well, and, and you're paying less than what you'd pay a normal fund manager. Yeah, I mean, it's nearly too good to be true, but the reason it works... What's the catch, Jeff? What's the catch? What, no, no, the reason it works is because the fund managers, you know, their, their business model is, is scalable. Like, if they were, you know, workers that, um, you know, got paid by the hour, then mm -hmm. it wouldn't be scalable. Um, you know, so it's just a, a function of, you know, finding a, a business that it costs nothing to manage more. Um, mm. And then, then, of course, you can get them to do it, um, you know, philanthropically. Mm. Oh, it's just, it's a win-win. So what's the hardest, how, how, um, how about Hamish? Because Hamish is tough work to get over the line. I know you got Magellan in there. Oh, sorry. Did he put up a fight? Do you say, oh, no. I've got to make a bit more money before I um, let you guys um, have a bit of capacity? Is that what was going on? Or? No, Hamish Douglas, yeah. Hamish was fantastic. Yeah, you know, was it two and a half, three years ago when we went down to meet him? Um, he, he said, look, around the same time, I think they'd done an ETF. Since then, they'd done a listed investment trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, yeah, hey, I think it's a fantastic concept. Love to be involved. Yeah, you know, so it was a very easy... Um, and, and yeah, I mean, they've been great supporters because we've got, you know, Frank, you know, runs their distribution. He's on the board yeah. um, of FGG. So we've got a very close relationship with them. Yeah, nice. No, is there any stories you've got of uh, more challenging uh, people to get on, on board? Is there, is there a certain time frame that you'll, you'll try for and then give up? Is it? Oh, there was... There was one fund manager we wanted on board. It only took us two years, but uh, to me, all things come to those who wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm presuming what you roll um, Louise out there and she just uh, sweet talks and you just got to send her out a lot. That's all. Yeah, the, I mean, it's, it's to, for, like they, they all realise that it's a great product and it adds real value. Mm. Um, and they all realise it's an opportunity for the community to give back, you know, the, you know, the funds management community. That does, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you don't see too many poor fund managers. No, no. Well, they don't. They don't stay fund managers very long if they're poor fund managers. Okay. So what? What with the decisions around what these funds were? Was this something that you you got the board together and then you guys chose what what sort of causes, or is this something that you were driving from your personal yeah. preference? That I mean. Our personal uh, path mm. that uh, focused on children at risk. Mm -hmm. So when we did FGX, you know the Australian uh, the the fund with the Australian fund managers, mm. the focus was their 
um, the actual Wilson Foundation, our foundation, was the one that uh, selected the charities mm -hmm. and it was children at risk. And then when we did the Global Fund, we were fortunate enough to have Louise Walsh, who had just left Philanthropy Australia. Mm. As soon as she resigned, I rang her and asked her if she wanted to come and be CEO and help yep. us raise the money. And soon after, uh, Chris Donoghue, who used to be, uh, he resigned as being the CEO of PM Capital. Yep. Um, and I, I offered him the opportunity to be CEO. And it took, Chris, it took him a minute to say yes. But Louise, it took a little while, but I offered to Louise first. And then oh, no. <laughs> Louise said yes. So then they were both CEO for a period of time. <laughs> and, but they had different skill sets. So Louise was good on the philanthropic side. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, Chris was great on the fund management side. He'd, he'd floated a couple of li listed investment companies. So he was a great asset. Mm. Uh, and then um, after we raised the money, then Chris set up his own um, business, which is called Seed, which helps raise money for listed investment companies. Okay. Uh, and yes, so and Louise stayed on as CEO. Um, okay. Yeah. So, but in that process, we sent out a survey to all the FGX shareholders and said, look, we're doing FGG. What cause area do you want to focus on? And and the Two core areas we were looking at was sort of the older people in Australia, which tend to be underinvested in, yeah. uh, and, and the uh, and mental health. They were the two main core areas which Louise had said were undervalued. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry, were underinvested in. Um, yeah. Separately, the Wilson Foundation. You know, my wife Karen, she was looking at mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, shareholders came back and said. Um, their number one pick was mental health. So that was pretty easy. So the second one was youth mental health. And yeah, nice. said, on the journey, I've realized how grossly underfunded mental health is in Australia. And, and it's, it's nearly, mm. it's nearly um, sort of farcical that you'd think, what do you want to invest in? You want to invest in, you know, in Australia, what, you want to invest in your people and you want to invest in their physical and mental health. Mm. And why would you, the government sort of, I think the government invests 50 cents in the dollar that they should invest, so half the money they should invest. Oh, so an assessment has sort of said that... Exactly. That how, grossly, how grossly underfunded it was. Um, so, and, and why is it grossly underfunded is because there's not that many votes in it. And even though mental health issues, you know, um, affect a significant portion of the Australian population, Mm. Um, yeah, it's surprising the number. All you got to do is look at personal insurance claims and mental health claims yeah. have gone through the roof over the last few years. Yeah, um, but wouldn't you think you'd invest in it to improve the, you know, the productivity? Um, yeah, absolutely. It must be yeah, anyway, from an economic bizarre. But, but so telling me why why it's not invested in why mental health is underinvested. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, and mental health is significantly underinvested. Mm. Oh, sorry, mental. Why is there not more money going into mental health? Mm. Is because of the stigma. Like there's no votes in government, um, or no votes for government, mm. um, and the stigma associated with mental health. So the more mainstream, or the more we discuss you know, mental health issues, mm -hmm. you know, the better for the potential funding, um, yeah. and the better for, I suppose, Australia, Australia's population. Yeah, well, and so. So with the mental health, um, the charities themselves, what what are the sort of performance metrics that uh, you're looking at? Yeah. <laughs> are you guys on? Oh, I still can't. Yep, just the sound. Yep, gotcha. Are you guys on the new MBN? Is that what's going on? How are we going? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh. Hello, Jeff. Okay, well, um, Jeff hasn't been able to get back on. Um, for those who may have missed the specific um, businesses we were talking about, um, the business that Jeff, uh, Jeff created was Future Generation Investments. So if you look up Future Generation on Google, it'll come up with the Australian uh, and the global uh, share funds. Um, 
it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it's been on my radar to go into my portfolio for uh, a while. Um, it's just got so many good qualities uh, in the mix in terms of uh, I really think it can be uh, great for engaging, um, I guess, bringing people into the, um, their money a bit more and the engagement, especially around voting for which charities the money goes to. Um, a number of clients I've dealt with in the past have wanted to, um, I guess, have investments that had more of an impact, that um, had a bit of a, um, was giving back to the community. And I'm really conscious of that. So there is there is definitely a market um, amongst our clients, so a subset of clients that um, this sort of um, option um, would be quite appealing. And for the one, even the ones that just want to make money, um, it's it's still a great investment proposition um, because you're not uh, you're essentially getting net. Um, you're paying net less than what you would if you were investing in these managers that are underlying anyway. So uh, yeah, really cool thing to check out. Um, Jeff, thanks for thanks for coming on. Uh, for those who haven't um, registered yet in Sydney, we've got the XY Advisor event coming up in a couple of weeks' time. So jump on the Facebook group. Uh, it's got a link through the Eventbrite. And looking forward to having everyone there. It's going to be a great night with FinTech and uh, learning a, a bit about what's coming up next year. So uh, to that extent, have a great rest of the week.